You travel to an incredible location looking for wildlife and when you finally have an incredible scene in front of your camera, you realize the ambient light is too low. So you raise your ISO to crazy high because that's the only way to get a proper exposure, right? But then you go home and you realize your files are completely unusable because of the noise. Well, the good news here is you're not alone. This situation is very common not only for wildlife photography, but also for uh, indoor sports, events, weddings, anything that happens in a low light situation. It took me years to learn how to deal with these situations. And in this video, we will see what really happens in your camera when shooting in low light conditions and what is best to do. Stay till the end of the video to see how I shot this photo at ISO 12800 with a very slow shutter speed on a super long lens and still managed to get a proper nice exposure and sharp image. If you're new to this channel, I publish weekly content where I share everything I learned in more than 10 years working as a professional nature and wildlife photographer. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more. When dealing with low light situations, the first thing you need to know is that noise is not actually caused by high ISO values as we generally think. Image noise is a random variation of brightness or color information in images and is usually an aspect of electronic noise. When we take a photo, the noise is always recording some noise in the image, regardless of the ISO values we are using. So even at ISO 100, we have some noise in the image. Let's see a practical example. I took these two photos here on my desk with the same light conditions, one at ISO 100 and the other one at ISO 51000. Since all other settings stays the same, the one shot at ISO 100 is of course underexposed. As you can see, once I take this photo back to a good exposure in post-production, it looks even noisier than the one I took at ISO 51000. So why is this happening and why we see the noise only in higher ISO photos normally? To understand this, we have to take a quick look at the three ways that we have to control the exposure. So, we have aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Aperture is quite easy to understand and we can clearly see it here. This is a wider aperture, this is a narrower aperture. It's... I think this is f16, this is f18. It's clear that at a wider aperture we are allowing more light to go through the lens and eating the sensor. Let's now take the shutter speed. In this case, we change for how long the sensor is exposed to this light. Once again, we change the amount of light that is hitting the sensor. The ISO is a completely different thing. And what it does is it multiplies the signal that is coming out of the sensor. We can look at ISO as the gain, the volume that we are changing on the amplifier of an electric guitar while shutter speed and aperture would correspond more to the force that we are actually applying on the strings. With aperture and shutter speed, we can directly change how much light is hitting the sensor, while with ISO, we are only applying a gain to whatever is coming out of this sensor. With this in mind, let's see what happens when we take a photo at ISO 100. In this situation, we have a lot of light reaching the sensor and for this reason we are using a low ISO value because there is no need to amplify this signal. The noise is still there but the light hitting the sensor is overpowering it so much that it's basically invisible. Even if we open the photo in the computer and we zoom in all the way we don't see any noise. This is what we call a good noise to signal ratio because we have a very low noise level and a very high signal level, meaning a lot of light hitting the sensor. Let's now take a photo in the same light conditions, but at ISO 51000. Since we are using a higher ISO value, what we have to do to avoid all the image to be blown out, we have, for example, to use a faster shutter speed, right? As we've seen, the noise is not affecting how much light is hitting the sensor, but the shutter speed does. 
and so by using a faster shutter speed we are dramatically reducing the amount of light on our sensor. Less light means a worse signal to noise ratio with the level light now being much much closer to the level of the noise. When we apply ISO 51000 that is a lot of gain to whatever comes out of the sensor we are amplifying both the signal and the noise and the result is that the noise becomes visible. So what is the solution to get less noise in your images when you shoot in low light conditions? Well it's simple there is only one you need to improve the signal to noise ratio you need more light to hit your sensor and there are only three ways to do that. The first way we can use to add more light to a photo is to actually add more light on the scene. This can be done with strobes and speed lights, but also with less conventional tools. For example, when I'm on an expedition or I'm shooting in remote places in the mountains, I use a lot of my headlamps to light up the scene. Or if we are on a safari, we can use the spotlights of our safari vehicle. But generally, when we are shooting wildlife, this is very difficult. We don't want the light to come from the same angle as the camera, we want it to have a different angle. This means having two different vehicles, someone else is operating the light. So it's very complicated and it's not even an option in the majority of scenarios. The second way to get more light to your sensor is to use a wider aperture. So when the light goes down, make sure you're using the fastest lens you have and by fastest I mean the one with the widest aperture. If you have a lens that is 2.8, use that. If you have one that is f2.0 or even faster 1.4, use the, the widest one you have and set the aperture at the widest value you can. If this is still not enough, the last thing to do is to use a slower shutter speed. Now, if you're shooting landscapes or non-moving subjects, you have no problems. You can place your camera on a tripod and this will allow you for very, very slow shutter speeds. For example, in this series I shot in Namibia a few weeks ago, I used 30 seconds exposures at f2.8 and while the ISO is still up to 8000, the noise is still very reasonable because the signal to noise ratio was good. If you're shooting moving subjects like wildlife, this gets a bit more complicated as you want to keep a shutter speed fast enough to freeze the motion. Let's now see how I shot this photo in very challenging light conditions during my last trip to Namibia. But before that, remember that having a clean and noise-free image is just a small part of creating a good photograph. If you just started doing wildlife or if you feel stuck in your creative process, I created a 100 pages ebook where I cover all the basics from choosing the right gear to camera settings, composition and dealing with different light situations. You can download it for free, just click in the link down here in the description, sign up to my newsletter and you will receive the ebook directly in your inbox. Back to this photo, it was the end of an amazing day in Etosha National Park. It was after sunset and I was already assuming the day was over and I don't need the camera anymore when I saw this big herd of elephants walking in to a water hole very close to our camp. I grabbed my camera and moved into position but as soon as I tried to take some photos I realized the light was very very low. Sometimes we don't realize that because our eye can still see in very low light situations but our camera cannot. I did not have time to go back and look for my tripod so I found a wall where I could place my camera so that the camera was steady and I was able to go slower in shutter speed. The elephants were still moving but it was kind of a slow movement and I found that one two hundredth of a second was kind of a sweet spot to get enough light in the sensor but still freeze the motion. So once I dialed one two hundredth of a second and the widest aperture of my 600 millimeters lens which is f4 i saw that the result was iso 12800 as you can see there is still some noise but it's very reasonable and i can easily get rid of that in post-production and this is because the signal to noise ratio 
would still at a good point. Now remember that every camera has a different response to Iger ISO. This was my first ever DSLR. It's I think almost 15 years old now, Nikon D90. When shooting with this one, I remember I was scared to go higher than ISO 400 because already at 800 it would show some noise. Now, 15 years later, we have much better sensor. With my R5, I know I can keep shooting until around 12,800 ISO. When I use my R3, I can go as high as 51,000 and still get usable image. Try it on your camera, go and take some test shots at different ISO values and try to see the point where you can still get usable images. So that when you are out in the field, you know where you can go and when it's time to just stop shooting and go back for dinner. My last tip for this video is when you use higher ISO values, always try to overexpose a bit. In fact, it doesn't matter the camera you're using, it's better to use higher ISO values and get an overexposed image that you will bring back in post-production rather than using a lower ISO value and increase the exposure in post. Of course, we cannot expect the best quality when we are shooting in crazy low light. Experiment a bit, don't be afraid of using higher ISO values, overexpose a bit and you will be amazed by the quality you will be able to bring back.